Now finally heading off is Eric Swanson for 45 yards. All, have been, all of them have been costly. Sturmitz brings the offense up. Got Coleman on the near side. He'll fade back and now hand it off to Bonier on the right side. Across the 45, the 50, to the 45, down to the 40, and dragged out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Mark at the Around the 40, so call it only about a 20-yard pickup. Either way, the ball sitting just inside the 40-yard line of the Royals. Sturmitz hands off the fountain across the middle. He'll break up to the 35 and finally tackled out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So the 32-yard line. And boy, as that wind switched, the rain all of a sudden has stopped, but the wind has kept on going. <laughs> Coleman is on the air side. Eye formation once again for the Elgin Maroons. Second down and about three. Sturmitz with the hand out the fountain up the middle, across the 30, and down to the 28-yard line before he's finally tackled by Abdallah. And also number four. first down and 10 for the Maroons. The ball inside the 30, called the 28-yard line of the Royals. Sturmitz looking over the defense, calls out the signals. Looks like the right side jump, but no flag. Sturmitz now will be dragged down at the 32-yard line. Good play out there by number 50, that being Jesse Velasquez. <laughs> <laughs> John, he was pretty much sitting in the uh, hot seat as I gave some tough questions. <laughs> 7.05 left here in the first half. The Maroons lead at 16 to nothing. They have a second down at 14. Sturmitz brings the offense up. He's got Baddock to the right. Coleman to the left. Here's a slant into Coleman. It bounces incomplete, but there's a flag once again. Could be holding against the Maroons. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because the ball is just rolling across the field right now. <laughs> Third down at 14. One man in the backfield, three to the right side for the Maroons. Sturmitz rolls out. Here comes the blitz from the Royals. Sturmitz rolls. He's trying to throw to Baddock, but overthrows him at the 28-yard line. It'll bring up a fourth down at four. Fourth and 14. Coleman breaks out to the far side along with Baddock. In the slot is Eric Boney. One man in the backfield, that being Fountain. Sturmitz, uh, let's see what's going on here as... Looks like the sideline of the Maroons. Down. Well, the Maroons are going back for more here. It's fourth down and 14, though. They are at their 31-yard line. They're already up 16 to nothing. A stunning first quarter, one that I've never seen before. And Eric Boney will try a field goal. The ball will sit at the 39-yard line. This will be a 49-yard field goal attempt. Weber will be the holder. And here's the snap. The ball's down. Here's the kick. And it's low, and it's not even no chance at all. Was it partially blocked? It might have been blocked as now as it's going to roll into the end zone for a touchback as the Maroons were heading down there. I think Larkin would have probably walked off the field after We've that. We've seen a lot of, <laughs> a lot of strange games between the Royals and the Maroons. Jensen brings the wishbone up. He fakes the handoff, now hands off to Herman. Herman tackled behind the line, but finally does get up across the 20, maybe the 21. The, already the Elgin defenders, the Elgin Maroon defenders were in the backfield. Royals break out of the huddle. Rick Glover breaks out to the near side for the Royals. Has single coverage. Jensen will roll out. He steps into the... Now to throw deep to Glover. Good pass against the wind, though. And it's overthrown as he was covered. Just set up the Royals' offense by showing that Baddock only had single coverage. But when it did uh, finally unfold, Keith Height with the double coverage. Third down and nine for the Royals. Jensen has the wishbone offense back behind him once again. Glover to the near side. Jensen rolls back. He's looking. He's looking. He'll throw down deep. He's got a man open. Herman. Oh, just out of his hands at the 49. That's, so that's really unfortunate because Herman, first of all, turned to his right, looked over his right shoulder, then looked over his left shoulder, and, and it really didn't look like he had any no, chance I didn't of see catching any, that ball at all. I didn't see any contact at all on that one, Paul. 37. So big break for the Royals. Jensen now hands off the Dahl across the left side, and he dives up to the 39-yard line, maybe a pickup of three. But the records are, these two, these two teams will play their hearts out. No matter if the Packers or as long as they beat the Bears, that's their one goal. They go one and 15. That's right. And here's the handoff to Herman, who breaks across. That might be Godfrey, though. I can't see that. All I saw being Godfrey. Nice bit of running. But call it 20 yards as they marked it out the 45. Boney with the field goal. A 24 yard field goal by Eric Boney makes the score now 19 to nothing in favor of the Elgin Maroons. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get that one in, Paul. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Paul, you know, 40 yard line. Eric Boney waiting for the signal. 
Don's <laughs> laughing on the side there, yeah. Don. Yeah. <laughs> Still waiting. Here's the kick, and it's a hot side. Once again, that ball won't go five yards. It starts rolling backwards, and it rolls back at the end. It's picked up by Larkin at the 40-yard line of the clock rolling. Gamby and your folks, and with prices starting at only $695, you'll still have plenty of money left over for gas. That's the used car factory two blocks east, super two blocks south of the tollway, or call 695-5160. Well, here we go. The final two seconds. The ball was officially marked at the 39-yard line, so a loss of one yard on the kickoff. And three men on the left side for the Royals. Jensen fades back, throws the ball up. The wind's going to hold it, but it's no in and out of the hands of the Maroon defender. So we finally have come to the end of the first half with the score. The Elgin Maroons, 19. He's got an opening. He might break through. No, he'll be tackled at the 50. But he had an opening there as number 24. It's off to Herman up the middle, and Herman breaks, or excuse me, makes it to Godfrey once again, and he'll get down to the 42-yard line. Now let's make that Herman. I'll tell you, I'm missing that first number. All I see is the five. Jeff Herman with the carry. Picks up maybe four yards. It'll bring a third up, third down and two, as they have to get inside the 40 down to the near side will be Eric Swanson. Wish ball once again. Hand off up the middle to Godfrey, and Godfrey does not get it. Down in about one and a half, we'll call it. Just 10 minutes left here in the third quarter. Just underway. Maroons lead 19-0. Jensen calling out the signals. Now hands it off to Dahl. Dahl is met at the 40. He won't get it. As gang tackled by the Maroons, that being David Riley, along with Dan, uh, excuse me, yeah, Dan Tripp, made down. That's, a, that's the first thing, yeah. They're going to see if it's a first down, and it shouldn't be, which it isn't. No, it, they had to get close to the 39-yard line, so the Maroons have possession of the ball. It'll be first down now for the background. We're not that far away from the Elgin Maroon coaching staff who were uh, flying out of their chairs on that great defensive play by David Riley. Riley met Dahl and just stood him up, and then, of course, Tim never had a blocker. So first down and 10, ball at the 45-yard line. Eye formation once again. Atman Vicious in the backfield. Sturmitz hands off to Atman Vicious. He's got one man to beat around the left side. He gets him. The 45, the 40, the 35, and finally met at the 28-yard line and pushed out of bounds. Big hit out there by Roger Green. First down for the Maroons. So once again, the Maroons on the roll. Offensively, they've connected and really have clicked. Here's the Sturmitz with a quick handoff, and there's a ball loose on the ground. Let's see what's going on. No, I don't believe so. As they just stopped Fountain, John Fountain, at the, the third quarter, the Maroons lead it 19 to nothing. Sturmitz, high formation in the backfield, being Fountain and Amanda Vicious. Coleman in motion. Here's the pitch back to Amanda Vicious around the left side. He's at the 25. There's a flag down. It'll be holding as out of bounds goes Amanda Vicious, and I believe the call will be on Weber for holding. Ella marked this one back all the way to the 34-yard line. Nope, 33-yard line. He stood at the 34, and the guy, the upper behind him. 3-yard line, they had to get down to the 17-yard line for a first down. Uh, that's 16 yards. That was right in the first. High formation once again. Boney out to the near side. And here's the pitch. A reverse to Boney, and he'll run around the right side. He's got a lot of room at the 35, the 30. Now he's cut back at the 25 and gets inside the 20. Finally, and there's another flag. I tell you, out of bounds was Boney. No one, nowhere to go. 17 or so on the yard line, but let's see what the let's see what the call is. But it's uh, against the Maroons. It's going to be for holding. A legal use of the hands or holding or whatever. It'll bring it back once again. Good play. Let's see the Larkin Royals look so lethargic though in all my coverage this season. They really haven't done anything to make a defensive play to turn the momentum around. Sturmitz, the handoff right up the middle to Fountain. He'll break across the 35 down to the 30. So pick up a five yards for John Fountain. Nice bit on WRMN in Elgin. Hey, I'll be just sitting at home tomorrow too, uh, Jeff. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I won't be. Sturmitz rolls back. Now he's into the pocket. He's being blitzed and he'll be taken down. So this is what the Royals needed. Is in on the tackle was both Godfrey and they're going to go for it. The, I would say they would have to go for it. But then, it, okay. They have to get down to the 16-yard line, yep. inside the 17-yard line, so high formation. Coleman breaks to the near side, or excuse me, the far side. Sturman's pitch back the quick punt, and here it is. Fountain, it'll bounce at the 10. It'll roll to the 5, and Coleman will recover at the 5-yard line. So the quick punt 
has sent the Royals back into their own territory at the foul. Control of this ball game. They coming up with some different type of plays that I've never seen before. <laughs> Tyrone Kemper now comes in for Keith Height. And now the Elgin Maroons got things all mixed up here as they're going to have to call. Just appliance and TV center, 75 West State Street, next to the bridge in South Elgin. And remember, Washer's service is what they sell. Jensen brings the offense up, eye formation. He'll pitch back, that being a doll, around the five-yard line. He's got some opening, the 10, the 15, and it closing, closing quickly as a height along with number 32 for the Maroons. Uh, excuse me, it's 22. That's Scott Sturmitz, and but it is a first down. So good play there by the Royals as now they come out in the I formation. They need to put some points on the board. Jensen hands off once again to Dahl up the middle, and he's and there's a face mask as he's reached to the 19-yard line, but there's a face mask on the play. And I'll tell you, this has been a lot of disagreement amongst the <laughs> Elgin <laughs> coaching back here in the background. <laughs> In favor of the Maroons. Bringing out on top is Rick Glover to the near side is Swanson. Jensen rolls out to the left. The pitch back to Dahl. He grabs it at the 35. Got a good block. Now pushed out around the 40 and good play by Dahl. As he gets to the 44 and another flag now. So let's see what's <laughs> And let's mark it at the 42 yard line of the Elgin Maroons. First down. And we're ready to go here. Let's give Dahl 10 and let's call 15 against the Maroons. I formation once again. Jensen hands off to Dahl across the middle. He breaks across the 35 down to possibly the 34 yard line. Still lead 19 to nothing. That was the halftime score. Now Herman breaks out to the near side. I formation once again. And here's the handoff to Dahl across the 30 and down to the 29 yard line. Gain of about four yards. The drive continues. Ball just inside the 30-yard line of the Maroons. Once again, Herman breaks to the near side, eye formation. And here's the handoff to Dahl from the 30, down to the 25, and dragged all the way down to the 23-yard line. Made a call. Looking down at four, ball to the 23-yard line of the Maroons as the Royals finally starting to show some offense here. Halfway through the third quarter, they're down 19 zip. Herman to the near side, has single coverage. And Jensen now rolls out and hands it off to Dahl. Dahl around the 20, and he's got open area. He'll score as he's into the end zone. Tim Dahl has finally scored, and the Royals get on the board. Tim Dahl, 23-yard touchdown run around the right end. And the score is down 19. 19 to 6. you got to expect the two-point conversion attempt coming up here. Well, the Royals were helped by two 15-yard penalties against the Maroons. Jensen rolls out to the right. He'll keep inside, turns up, and scores the two points. So with 4.52 left here in the third quarter, the Royals have put eight points. Ball at the 40-yard line, 4.52 in the third quarter, and the Royals have finally got on the board as the wind now blows the ball off the tee. They got on the board with the help of a 23-yard touchdown run by Tim Dahl. Big defensive surge coming up, hopefully, for the Larkin Royals to try to stop the Elgin Maroon offense. Godfrey, low line drive right to the arms of Coleman. Coleman breaks it up to the near side and gets across the 30, maybe the 35 yard line. Good run by Coleman. So, high formation for the Maroons. Coleman to the near side, draws single coverage. Fountain and Atman of Vicious in the backfield. Now in motion is Coleman, and he'll sweep to the left side, Sturmitz, and Sturmitz is dragged down at the 30, down to the 29-yard line. And all of a sudden, it's Bob Abdal in the backfield along with Godfrey, and this is the moment. All pretty much cleared out. That's right. We're going to have a football game here yet. <laughs> it's second down and, say, 15 for the Maroons back at the 30-yard line. Sturmitz will roll to the right. He's looking to pass. He's looking. He's got Weber almost intercepted, and ball will fall to the ground incomplete. But over there, number 69, Ricky Young, along with Baddock, and that man of Vicious on a slot left. Weber tight end. One man in the backfield, being Fountain, Sturmitz. Rolling to the right, being hounded, rolling, rolling. He's going to have to throw. I think he's past the line as it's tipped out of bounds, but no flag. Either way, at 30-yard line. Legal forward pass called against the Maroons. That's going to carry with a loss of down. And it'll be a long ways. 
It's not only penalty yardage marked off, but Five it's also going to be a, a loss of down, so it'll be a fourth down situation. Yeah, that's what I think exactly happened, Paul, is he rolled to the right and he only saw the 10-yard and he didn't realize that, or he forgot, that he was five yards back. The Elgin Maroons have started to uh, run into problems here. Momentum has joined the side of the Royals. Eric Boney standing back at about his 12-yard line, waiting for the snap, and it's a high snap, but no rush by the Royals is the kick, and it's end over end. It'll bounce at the 46-yard line, and it dropped stop right about the 38 yard line. So once again, the Royals will have possession. Of the Offense comes up for the Royals. They're back in the split backfield. Breaking out to the left is Herman. Jetson hands off to, I believe, Godfrey, and Godfrey's met. And is there a flag on the play back at the 30 yard line? 10. Herman breaks to the near side. I believe that's Swanson to the far side. Jensen pitches back to Dahl. Dahl at the 40, the 45, the 50, and down to the 48-yard line of the Maroons. Tim Dahl close to 90 yards, close to 100 yards in this game now. It's really come on. First down and 10 for the Royals. Jensen hands right up the gut to, I believe, Godfrey. And a pickup of maybe three yards. 2.05 left here in the third quarter. And Jensen now will roll to the right, and he's met. Ball loose, ball on the ground at the 50, and Dahl, no, ball still loose as Dahl had it. I think the Maroons looked like they might have recovered it, but no call yet. Let's see what it is. As Dahl had it, and it slid underneath his arms, still waiting for the call. I'll try to unstack the pile here, and it looks like it's going to go to the Larkin Royals. And that's what it will be, as I think Ray Godfrey came up with a loose ball. Uh, he saved disaster there for the Royals. Brian Itter breaks out to the left side. Herman to the near side. High formation for the Royals. Clock now starts to roll. Jensen calling out the signals. And we're looking for a reverse, and that is to Herman, and he's got some room. Herman across the 45 to 50, and then finally tackled at the 48-yard line. Is good coverage out there by number 55, Dan. Gore is going to be standing at about his 17, 16-yard line. Here's the snap. Oh, oh and yeah, what's going And the punt was blocked. It's going to be down right there because Herman uh, missed the punt. If he would have hit the ball, it would have been a different story, but he totally missed the punt as the ball lands at about the 43-yard line. Uh, he's pretty much tackled as he tried to get yeah. the kick, and you can do yeah. that uh, Royals with just 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. Coleman breaks out to the far side. And Matt Vicious and Fountain in the backfield. Sturmitz. Hands off to Amanda Vicious around the left side, and a good tackle out there by the Royals. That being number 35, Ray Godfrey. Godfrey with a good leg tackle. One yard loss. Second down and 11. Coleman to the near side. High formation once again for the Maroons. There's a handoff. Sturmitz pitches back to the fountain. Found across the 45, the 40, the 35, down to the 30, and maybe the 29 yard line. So John Fountain with a sweep right picks up close to and we're back and we're set for fourth quarter action as Sturmitz hands off no he sweeps for left and pitches back to Amanda Vicious he's being strung out across the line he finally breaks a tackle and he gets out of bounds finally tackled around the 27 yard line quarter. Coleman breaks out to the far side. Baddock, the tight end, and there's so now they're telling Coleman has to be the right side, and there's where he hustles to. High formation once again, and Sturmitz just gets the snap as Boney comes around the left side, breaks through a couple tackles, still dancing on the 20, the 15, he's still up to the 10, and finally, is he still up? No, he's tackled around the five yard line. So what a play by Eric Boney as he just danced around a few blockers. A beautiful run as he hit. First down and goal to goal. Ball to six. A power high now as that whistle is in the backfield for the Maroons. Sturmitz hands off to him and is vicious. He's met in the backfield. What a play out there. Is that Nakanenzi, number 36? Yeah, that Bill was Bill Nakanenzi. Right. Momentum was with the Royals, but now it's switched back to the Maroons on the block punt. Power high once again. Sturmitz. 
Is he carrying the ball? He'll cut inside down to the one yard line and he's close, but no marking as he's about half a yard short, says Eric Boney. Nice play by Sturmitz as he got the handoff and as he saw a hole develop up. Five to eight. Sturmitz brings the offense up. He likes the quarterback keeper on these. Let's see what he does. Sturmitz hands off to Amanda Vicious. We have a penalty flag as touchdown, but uh, they might call this one back. That's what it is. A legal procedure called against the Maroons. And what a play that is as that Amanda Vicious went in for the touchdown. That's true because if, yeah, if that Amanda Vicious scores, I think you could write this one off as history, the ultra Maroon victory, but let's see what happens now. I'll take it back to the six yard line or so to bring up a third down and go to goal from the six. Nine fifty six or do the Royals. Some type of turnover or something to stop the Maroons from scoring. Power eye once again for the Maroons. Sturmitz looking over the defense. Hands it off. No, he'll keep it. Roll around to the five. It cuts it inside and met at the one yard line and he did not get in. So it'll be fourth down at the about the about the one yard it's line. from getting in for the touchdown. So fourth down. Ball at the one yard line. The Royals need another defensive stand. Here's the ball game right here. Sturmitz brings the power eye up. Looking over the defense. Here's the call. Hands off to Amanda Vicious. Yeah. Touchdown, the Maroons. As Amanda Vicious just had an opening the size of a tank across the right side. And the score is a huge to hole. 24 to 8. It should be 25. 25. It should be 25 to 8 in favor of the Elgin Maroons. Here's the extra point attempt. Here's the snap. Weber puts it down. The kick gets up. And it's good. So Eric Boney puts the extra point through. And with 9-10 left in this game. And there it is. Here's the kick. A floater as it bounces at the 20 yard line. And we have flags down here as the Maroons were offside. Pony waiting now for the referee to pick up his flag. <laughs> and there's the whistle. We're ready to begin play once again. Here's the kick. There's a better kick high end over there, and it'll be picked off by Dahl at the 17-yard line. Across the 30, the 35, and there he'll be tackled right at the 35, maybe to the 36-yard line. It's left to go, and the clock begins to run. Herman breaks out to the near side. To the far side is Etter. Eye formation for the Royals, that being Godfrey and Tim Dahl. And here's... Jensen hands off to Dahl, and Dahl maybe picked up a yard or two. I think the Elgin Maroons smelled that one out. Yeah, Dahl didn't find any. Yeah, this, of course, the running plays help the Maroons because it takes the time off the clock. Rick Glover to the near side, Herman to the far side. Jensen calling out the signals. This time he drops back. He's looking, he's being pressured, and he'll be tackled by both Riley and Scott. Scott Davis in the backfield along with about 15 yards to go, 15, 16 yards. Glover once again to the near side. Herman out to the far side. Eye formation. Dahl and Godfrey in the backfield. Jensen rolls back, rolls back. He's got it's tipped, and the ball falls to the ground harmlessly at the 18-yard line. So they'll bring fourth down for the Larkin. Going back for the Maroons is Anthony Gore. Herman set the punt at the... Now he's talking to his... Now he needs another player, and that's he needs a blocker, and that being Godfrey. Here's the snap. Herman, let's loose that as 18-yard line. Good punt as it'll bounce. Or anything in that first quarter. It's from that point on, the uh, Elgin Maroons control the tempo of this ballgame. Look for the Maroons to keep it on the ground to waste some time here. Sturmitz now talks to both uh, Atman Vicious and Fountain. Coleman in motion here is Atman Vicious to the near side. And he'll break up to maybe the line of scrimmage as they don't want to fall out of bounds. So. Sturmitz brings the offense up. Coleman to the near side. Eye formation once again. Boney the tailback. Sturmitz hands off to Fountain, that is, across the 50-yard line down to maybe the 49. Pick up of, and if they picked up any more yards, it'd be a fourth down. You'd still go for it. Still take another minute off. 6.15 left on a rolling clock. Coleman in motion. Sturmitz 
pitches back. Ball's loose on the ground. Ball at the 50, and it's recovered by the Maroons. And boy, Neck and Enzi laid a hit on, I believe, at Matavicious. Well, the, the only problem was Neck and Enzi ran right by the ball. I mean, he, he was so intent on laying a hit on at Matavicious, he never saw the fumble. Block cleared, cleaned, or whatever you want to say. You come up with the thousand saints. Fourth down and 11 is Boney standing at his 35-yard line. Here's the snap and the kick. Low line drive. It'll bounce about the 25-yard line. Picked up there and then around to the right side. And I don't know who that is, but he made a good opening all the way up to the 34-yard line. I think it's number 87. That Brian, being Brian Etter. Brian Etter, yeah. The used car factory has a huge used car selection of over 50 makes and models to choose from. Small cars, sporty cars, or even trucks. Used car factory has a vehicle that will fit your need and your budget. It's the used car factory, two blocks south of the tollway. Their phone, 695-5160. Jetson steps back to fade. It'll be picked off by Sturmitz at the 50, the 40, the 35. And he's torn to the 20 and knocked out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Scott Sturmitz intercepts. Jensen's pass. Sturman's having a heck of a ball game tonight with this one interception. He's well, Jensen had to air it out. There's no doubt about it. I'm sure he didn't see Sturman's as he did have an open man, Herman. But Sturman stepped right in the way, intercepted it. Sturman's rolls left. He's got an opening. He's still got an open. Now he pitches back to Amanda Vicious across the 10, the 5, touchdown. Elgin Maroos. Oh, yeah. Sturmitz just held that ball long enough to finally commit neck and For Atman Vicious and Sturmitz. Sturmitz just held that ball long enough and then finally pitched it out. And there was no one in front of him. Weber gets the snap. Here is the kick. It's up and it's good. So with 420 left, the score now is the Elgin Maroons 33 and the Larkin Royals 8. Let's take a break. Hard line. It was just five minutes ago that he teed it up. And he's waiting for the referee. The signal, and here it is. Dahl back at his five-yard line, and the ball falls off the tee as Boney made his approach. And wind is really picking up still. Yeah, Eric Boney will have the football held. And now we're still waiting once again for the referees. They both count, and we're ready here. Boney makes the charge. Here's the approach. And a line drive once again off the shoulder pads of Derek Kyles, picked up out there by Dahl, I believe, and he's met at the 15-yard line and dragged down. And a little scuffle going up being Jose Rice. And he's been thrown out of the ball game. And Dick Stevens not too happy about it, letting him know. Well, you don't want that to happen. It's 32 to 8 here, and uh, you don't want those type of things going on. You, you've got the momentum. It's it's your ball game. Why do that? Makes Dick no Stevens sense. really hot on the sideline at number 50. And a new quarterback team being Greenhagel, and Greenhagel hands off up to the last of his playing days. Yeah. Greenhagel, the quarterback for the Royals, their future. High formation for the Royals. I believe it's Godfrey and Dahl, but I can't tell. Now we have motion once again. And the handoff to Tim Dahl as he breaks across the 30, maybe to the 32-yard line, a gain of about three yards. 12, 11, 10, 3, 0, 9 left here in the fourth quarter. In this ballgame, the Maroons lead it 33-8, to 8, a surprise. Greenhagel rolls back, looking, looking. Look, still looking, doesn't have anyone open. They'll throw it just downfield, and it bounces harmlessly at the 48-yard line. To bring up a third down and 11 for the Royals at the 33. He looks like he's calling it tonight. Rick Glover breaks to the near side. High formation once again, Green Hagel. Looking over the defense. Steps back into the pocket, which breaks down. Here's a pass, good pass, but Glover in and out of his arms. And falls to the ground, incomplete. So fourth down and 11. Good pass by Green. Back deep is number four, Keith Hyatt. Here's the punt. High end over end. It'll bounce at the 45 and take a good royal bounce all the way down to the 30-yard line. And that's where the Maroons will start off with three for each side of town. And now this is where we have to bring out the roster. <laughs> because it looks like number 12, Scott Slicer, is in for the Maroons. And now we have a delay of game. Delay of game. Line, Slicer, the quarterback. And I can't tell numbers. It looks like maybe that's Peters at the eye back position. 
And Jerry Atenza, the fullback here, is a handoff to Peter, is up to the 29 yard line, maybe back to the 30. Let's give him a ball game. Tim Ruse, the wide receiver, breaks out to the far side. To the near side is Anthony Gore. Sizer pitches back. To Peters, breaks it up across the middle, up to the 30, wants to stay in bounds, and that he does as he gets to the 35-yard line. Another gain up. Let's call it six yards if they mark it at the 35-yard line. Sysa brings the offense up. Atenzia, along with Peters, in the eye formation. Sysa, quick handoff to Atenzia, and Atenzia is met right at the line, still hustling, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but either way, it'll bring up a fourth down and five for the Maroons left to punt where they kept the Elgin Larkin offense off the field. 25-24 is Boney standing at his 23-yard line. Here's the snap, the punt, and he just gets it off. It'll bounce at the 50 and roll down, nearly dead at the 30, let's call it the 38-yard line of the Royals with just 11 seconds left in this ball game. So the Royals will probably get maybe one. And the Larkin Royals 8 will be back for post-game, brought to you by Ackerman Furniture. Leather has always been considered one of the most comfortable materials for furniture, and since this is the Euro Leather, Ackerman's Home Furniture says, think leather at Ackerman Furniture. You can get fine leather furniture at reasonable prices. A leather recliner is only $8.19, or if you want a sofa, Ackerman's has genuine leather sofas in stock for as little as $9.99. Leather won't fade, and it can be cleaned up with just soap and water. It also outlasts fabric while maintaining its original beauty and is available in several fabulous colors. So think leather, think Ackerman Home Furniture on Highland in downtown Elgin. Well, the scoring went like this. The opening drive by the Elgin Maroons in the first quarter, they took it at their 15-yard line, and they kept it all the way to 524 the first quarter when they finally got a 27-yard field goal by Eric Boney to make it 3-0. Now they got the ball back at 2.53. They went in Scott Sturmitz on a one-yard touchdown run, the point after making it 10 nothing. And at that point, they had possession, nine minutes possession. Well, they tried another onside kick after the first one. They got it back. And with one second left in the first quarter, Scott Sturmitz with a three-yard run, making it 16 to nothing and closing out the Larkin Royals from ever getting uh, a playoff off.